in the second lecture of this uh, theme of multiple outputs and bad outputs, uh, I will introduce the uh, output distance function and directional distance function and uh, show how these kind of distance functions can be uh, modeled or estimated uh, using DEA. So recall from the previous lesson that uh, in production theory we usually think about the multiple outputs uh, setting in terms of the output set. So there is some kind of mapping from your input vector x to a output set that indicates the possible uh, output combinations that can be can be uh, produced with a given set of inputs. So in some sense the producer can uh, can choose whether to use the resources to produce output number one or output number two or produce some kind of combination of those two. And the curvature of the frontier then depends on this uh, possible synergies on the, in the joint production. So more it is curved away from the origin, the more synergies there are in the production. So if in this setting, uh, we have a mapping from a, un, um, from a vector of inputs to a set of outputs. But to, to estimate something like this, uh, it is very convenient to have some kind of uh, uh, functional representation of this kind of uh, multiple outputs technology. Like uh, I, we, we found that uh, single output production function is not uh, able to do that job. So we need a more general setting. So this illustration is taken from a text by Rolf Fair and Daniel Primont. Uh, and uh, this is very nice book on, on uh, multiple output production and duality. If you're interested in the, in the production theory and particularly in the multiple output setting, then that would be the book to look into. And in this diagram, we have similar to this Coelho's book, uh, two outputs. Now it's indicated by Y1 and Y2, similar to my notation also. And this P of X indicates the, the output set. So this, this uh, diagram illustrates you first the idea of the so-called output distance function that was introduced by, by Shepard already in the, this uh, 1970 book. So think about this uh, point uh, indicated by, by capital A. So this A would be clearly uh, inefficient because it operates with the, with the given inputs in the interior of the output set, but we can measure distance uh, from this A to the frontier. And the usual uh, distance metric that is, uh, that is used since this Farrell's 1957 paper is to measure this uh, radial distance from the, from the origin. So um, uh, in other words, we can, we can try to expand uh, this uh, output vector A uh, proportionately until we hit this uh, uh, efficient point B on the frontier. And therefore, this, uh, this uh, radial distance is measured as, a, as the distance from origin to point A. So this is indicated by this distance OA divided by the distance from origin to point B, o, OB. So this is the graphical uh, interpretation of the, of the output distance function. Uh, notice that uh, uh, if the point is uh, on this efficient frontier, then the value of the distance function is equal to 1. Uh, and whenever it is below the frontier, then the value of the distance function is less uh, than one. So this output distance function directly also indicates this kind of percentage uh, efficiency score in the multi-output setting. And this is also indeed frequently, uh, the output distance function is frequently used as a, as a measure of efficiency following this Farrell's 1957 idea. Now, if you consider some kind of hypothetical setting that there is some infeasible output combination. So for example, of course, we cannot, cannot really observe in practice something that is uh, infeasible, but think about some kind of blueprint technology that, uh, that is only, only designed, but not really implemented yet. So if we have some kind of uh, uh, new design and we could predict that what would be the output combinations, then potentially this uh, uh, value of the distance function for such kind of hypothetical technology could be also also greater than one. So if the point is uh, uh, outside this frontier, then then uh, the value of the distance function would be greater than one. That would indicate that uh, that uh, 
this uh, this kind of output combination is infeasible with the with the current technology or this current uh, output output set p of x and we will also utilize this in the next team for measuring the technical progress because we could also take into account uh, um, from different time periods these kind of uh, output combinations so for example if we if we compare uh, technology of of year t and then we take uh, in a future period t plus one if you observe that uh, that there are some kind of feasible combinations in year t plus one compared to the that are not feasible in year t then we can utilize the distance function also for measuring the the technical progress the, or the shift of the of the frontier so we will come back to that in in theme number seven but i already wanted you to think about this idea that uh, that this distance function for the for the some observed sample is always less than or equal to one, but it's also possible if you have some kind of uh, uh, infeasible points, it could be greater than one. And uh, this idea is also formalized in, in, uh, in duality theory. So we, it can be actually shown that uh, for all input-output combinations for which the output distance function is less than or equal to one, then these uh, input output vectors are technically feasible so they are they are included in the production possibilities at t so this is important result in the sense that uh, we can also show that the properties of the production technology carry over to the distance function so if for example uh, production uh, uh, production technology t satisfies free disposability then it implies that this output distance function must be uh, monotonic so what I want to emphasize here is uh, that the distance functions are not only measures of efficiency as they are commonly interpreted in the, in the literature, but also the distance functions are valid functional representations of the technology. So we can think about the output distance function, for example, as a, as a generalization of the idea of the production function. So uh, if we are interested in modeling the uh, multiple output production and uh, we already found that the single output production function doesn't easily generalize to the multiple output setting because essentially there is a set of possible output vectors that can be produced with a given uh, given function then the distance function can be a very useful functional representation of technology and we can then examine the uh, properties such as shadow crisis or uh, marginal rates of substitution and scale elasticities and uh, substitution elasticities using the distance functions whether we are not whether we are interested in efficiency or not that's that's uh, irrelevant the distance function can be also a generalization of the of the production function so i mentioned that uh, that uh, dea is very natural approach to modeling those uh, these multiple outputs and to illustrate it i have here in indicated you the connection between the production possibility set in dea and the output distance function. So I have taken this uh, variable returns to scale specification of DEA and on top of the figure I have just reproduced you this uh, um, production possibility set T that we co covered earlier in the theme number two. So remember that in, in the variable returns to scale uh, we, we model the uh, technology as the set of convex combinations of the observed data points so the observed data points are now modeled by this uh, uh, matrix capital y and capital x which indicate the data and this lowercase y and x they they refer to some hypothetical uh, hypothetical point so then the uh, output distance function can be formally computed by solving a linear programming problem so in this uh, this formulation we maximize some parameter theta so this theta indicates and that's the optimal theta indicates you the distance to the frontier and uh, we can then set this uh, similar constraints as in this uh, this uh, um, t production possibilities at t so notice that then then uh, we have this exactly same constraint but now in this uh, uh, output distance function we multiply the the um, evaluated output vector this lowercase lowercase uh, y we multiply by this uh, scalar theta so we try to 
expand this output vector uh, proportionately as much as possible until we get to this to this uh, frontier. And uh, for constraint for the inputs is exactly the same as in the in the T, and so also also for this weights lambda. So notice that this value of the uh, output distance function we can actually calculate by by solving this kind of linear programming problem. So very often, of course, this optimal value of of theta is interpreted as a as an output oriented efficiency score. So this is indeed uh, just output oriented. Uh, DEA problem, but uh, as I mentioned, this uh, this uh, this kind of distance function can be also used for characterizing the technology. So having solved this uh, uh, optimal optimal theta, we can of course find this kind of uh, uh, value on the on the production possibility set. So if you remember this uh, uh, conceptual figure from Fair and Primod, uh, we had this points A and B. So given A we can also then find the point B on the frontier. And we can find uh, any, any number of these points B on the frontier to characterize the frontier. So this output distance function allows us to then project uh, any, any point to the frontier and this way characterize the frontier. But we can also then use this uh, uh, multiplier formulation of DEA to, to study, for example, the shadow prices of the frontier. So this, this kind of formulation was presented for the output-oriented DEA, but of course the same is also true for the input-oriented DEA. So we could have so-called input distance function, which is also a representation of the technology. So notice that for this uh, production possibilities at T, we do not really project anywhere. It is just a set of feasible points. But, uh, but when we use some distance function, then we, then we essentially we measure distance from the given starting point to the frontier, and and uh, we we have here use this parameter theta to project the uh, outputs in the proportionate fashion to the frontier. So I mentioned earlier in theme two that there are of course also other other distance metrics than input distance and output distance functions, or output orientation and input orientation. And at this point, I want to also introduce you the idea of the so-called directional distance function, which is also often used, for example, when we have uh, uh, good outputs and bad outputs, but it can be used in any, any setting, really. So rather than uh, project these observations in the, in the radial fashion, either in the input orientation or output oriented way, keeping inputs constant or outputs constant, the directional distance function can be used for for projecting uh, the observed data point to any any particular direction, and here is an illustrative uh, uh, figure for to to give you an idea. So this is in the single input single output setting, and we have this kind of blue uh, concave uh, production frontier, and this red dot indicates this uh, our starting point. So that could be our observation x i y i, and by specifying some some uh, direction vector g so we have a g of x and g of y that indicate this uh, uh, basically the weights in in how in how much we we give weight to this x value x inputs and y outputs so this direction vector just specifies in which direction we are projecting to the frontier okay so it is possible to also have this uh, um, classical output uh, output distance function as a special case. So if we set this uh, vector g of x equal to zero, and if we set uh, g of y equal to observed y, then in fact this uh, directional distance function becomes equivalent to the output distance function. And same way we can also get this input uh, oriented measure as a special case by setting this g of x equal to x and uh, y equal to zero, then we would have the input oriented case. But in general, this directional distance function allows us to choose any 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 direction to the to the frontier. And it can be also shown that this uh, directional distance function is a is a general representation of the technology. So we can always think about this uh, uh, production possibilities at T 
of as as a, as a set of such kind of vectors for which this distance function is greater than or equal to zero. So now this distance function. Uh, it doesn't give this kind of natural percentage interpretation. Uh, so whenever this distance function is, uh, is uh, zero, then this observation is on the frontier. And when it is greater than zero, then it is uh, uh, in the interior of the production possibility. And here the negative values would indicate that the point is outside of the production possibility set. So here is the definition of the directional distance function what was introduced by Chambers, Chung, and Fair. And uh, so notice that we are uh, subtracting now from this, uh, this input vector x, uh, uh, some uh, theta times uh, g of x. And for the outputs, we add to the outputs y this uh, vector g of y multiplied by theta. So, so we are at the same time, we are uh, increasing outputs and decreasing inputs to try to get to the efficient boundary and uh, rather than do it in the in the radial manner we do it in this direction g of x and g of y so it is also possible to implement this uh, uh, directional distance function in the dea setting so similar to the output distance function i have here introduced you the linear programming formulation for calculating it uh, again, here we here maximize this parameter theta, but uh, now we do not proportionately rescale the output vector y, but rather we add here uh, to this output vector y, we add uh, uh, another vector g of y, which is the direction vector, and we multiply this direction vector by, by theta. But we also take it into the input vector x, so we, we subtract from the input vector this uh, a direction vector vector g of x multiplied by by scalar theta so now of course if you want to use this kind of directional distance function as an as a measure of efficiency then obvious question that arises is how should we specify this direction vector and there are there are a lot of debates about that in the literature so i already indicated that uh, it's possible to have this uh, use all radial cases as a special case. So if, for example, this g of y is equal to y and g of x is equal to zero, then this directional distance function can be converted to the usual, usual uh, radial distance function, for example. Uh, in some studies, this uh, g of x and g of y are just specified as unit vectors or vectors of equal to uh, consisting of ones. Uh, but there are there are many many possible choices. Uh, in my mind, uh, I'm still thinking about this uh, directional distance function more as a characterization of the technology. So for that purpose, it doesn't really matter so much what is this g of x. This question of uh, how to specify this g of x and g of y becomes mainly relevant when we use it as a measure of efficiency. But uh, as I mentioned earlier. We can also use it just as a generalized, uh, uh, further generalized version of the of the production function. So it's just a functional characterization of the technology, because uh, in many many situations this production possibility set T is kind of kind of difficult to characterize as such. So with this directional distance function, we can use it as a tool for projecting our observed data points to the frontier to characterize the efficient frontier and to, to study its properties like, like scale elasticities or substitution elasticities and so on and so on. So in some sense, the DDF is just a tool to characterize the technology, whether we want to use it as a measure of technology or not. And I come back to that point also a little bit later. Finally, it is also convenient to, to note that, uh, that sometimes rather than using this kind of uh, quantities based technology functions we might also use some kind of price based and uh, and uh, monetary characterizations of technology and for that purpose it's good to note this uh, cost function uh, which indicates the minimum cost of uh, producing the given output vector so this is of course the obvious connection also to the uh, empirical application that we have considered because we have estimated the cost frontier uh, 
uh, of the electricity distribution firms. So this also links to this idea of the cost function. So the general definition of cost function is given on this slide. So notice that this cost function C is a function of output quantities Y, but also input prices W. So it combines both price information and quantity information. And it's defined as the minimum cost of producing uh, inputs, uh, uh, sorry, minimum cost of producing this given output Y. And here, these input prices W are given, but we minimize over this input vector X. So in duality theory, it, it's also shown that uh, the cost function is an equivalent representation of the technology. So, so if we can recover the cost function or if we can estimate the cost function, we can also always, always carry, recover the uh, production possibility T. So we can always convert the cost function to this kind of set representations or we can co convert it to the distance functions and so on and so on. So ultimately, whether we estimate it using a, a price data or quantity data, we are still estimating the same, same technology. So if you think about the parametric representations, so for example, if the if the if we have a Cobb Douglas production function, then it can be also shown that the, the cost function is essentially a Cobb Douglas function of the of the input prices. So these kind of properties like functional form carry over from the production technology to the cost function. Same applies to these properties like scale elasticities or 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 um, substitution properties and so on. So that's a valuable lesson from the duality theory that we can we can use monetary representations or quantity representations and, and uh, both are uh, equivalent. So in DEA we could then uh, estimate the cost function in the following way. So if we have data of input prices and output quantities um, then uh, we can then minimize the cost. And here I have indicated with red color this uh, kind of vector G. So this G would be then representing this uh, true but unknown input vector. So in this uh, setting, we do not assume any input quantities. So we need to, we need to, need to estimate it. So this, this would be then minimizing the, oh, sorry, we, we also assume here that this, uh, for this reference set, we ob observe, observe this uh, input quantities X or so matrix X is, uh, is uh, uh, observed input quantities. So there are different variants of the cost function depending on what kind of information is actually, uh, actually observed. So here, then the problem would be to find this kind of input vector that uh, satisfies these technology constraints and minimizes the cost. So, but this is not really what we what we have done in this uh, application to electricity distribution firms. So that would be the special case where uh, we implicitly assume that all firms are taking the same prices W as given because in that application we do not really observe any any input prices, and uh, rather we then aggregated all these uh, inputs to the total cost aggregate. So I have indicated here now this with X would be the total cost observed for the different firms. So then we minimize the minimize this uh, scalar valued uh, X and and subject to this kind of technology constraints. And here this uh, matrix X would also then consist of observed total costs of the of the other firms in the sample. So that would be then this uh, DEA specification of the of the cost frontier. I think that's what we good to good to clarify because we have considered the, the cost frontier. So usually in the cost function we also control for the input prices W, but in this uh, this uh, electricity distribution application, as in many other applications as well, we do not really directly observe the the input prices. So we make this kind of implicitly an assumption that all all firms are facing the facing the same prices so that completes the the topic of the distance functions as the next theme uh, i will then also continue with the dea setting but uh, but consider the modeling of uh, undesirable outputs or bad outputs such as uh, 
pollution or greenhouse gas emissions.